Basketball is a contact sport, meaning that there's lots of legal contact and also a decent amount of illegal contact that just doesn't get caught. Let's be real, it's just the way it is. But it's a sink or swim type of thing. You can either use it to your advantage and kill with it, or on the flip side, you can let it really hurt your game. So I'll teach you how to make the most out of it. So first is understanding the position battle. The easiest way to think about this sometimes is by imagining a line, which is the ideal route to the hoop or the spot that you're trying to get to. Oftentimes you're literally in a battle for position on this line. If you get pushed off of it, the defense could recover, you could end up way off from where you're trying to go, or you could turn it over. If you win that battle by being proactive, you'll likely find yourself with a much easier shot, maybe collapsing the defense and diming, or even sneaking in front of your defender and making magic happen from there. So to win this battle, this could include taking a tight angle from the jump to ensure that you're in good position to use your momentum, or once that defender's on your hip, not only resisting bumps, but initiating that contact to win your line. It's tough because you're sprinting and usually only one foot is on the ground, which means less stability, but it's something that the best are just able to do. And this brings to mind an interesting conversation, finding that balance between bumping defenders and being aggressive, and then being controlled. A lot of the time players try this and immediately go all out, bumping like crazy, just out of control, but it's really an art and something that takes a lot of skill to find the timing, the level of power, and the frequency of contact that's effective, but keeps you in control. One major way to do this is by using the base, not the midsection to create contact, as I speak about here. Down here in this area, a lot of players wanna throw, basically just throw their upper body. So they're just like, ah, oh, right? It's a lot easier to stay on balance when you're able to source that power from the base. Like you're pushing here rather than throwing here. You see the difference? It's here, I'm more on balance even when I come to two, versus here, I'm just like, oh, if I don't create that contact, I'm out of there. And the same thing goes for the next point I'll talk about, which is actually using contact to create separation. And doing it in a way that's physical enough to really bump a defender, but controlled enough to stay stable and able to separate. Whether this is in the mid-range, which we see a lot as players are coming off of screens or separating out, maybe around the rim by bumping players backwards before a finish, or even ball handling, using the body to create and manage space. The idea of bumping a defender to get their momentum moving one way and then separating the opposite way is something we see a lot and again, is very legal, especially if it's done with a mostly flex shoulder and not extending to push off. But speaking of using that arm, there are ways to use it more dynamically as a ball handler, that'll give you a huge advantage. I've made full videos about this, so I won't go fully into it, but understand that using the off arm isn't a cop out. Usually it's not a foul if it's not a full push off, and it definitely isn't something to avoid. It's something that the best players at every level do, especially when they feel a defender's hand on them. They'll swipe at it, swim over it, use it as leverage to send their defender backwards, protect the ball. If you keep that off arm stagnant because you're afraid to use it, you're missing out on a lot and probably putting yourself at a disadvantage. Let's look at contact around that rim now, because there's a lot of it. And one of the questions I get most is how to finish better through contact. Well, I would say there are two ways to do this. Number one is once again, making it so that instead of waiting for the contact to come to you, you're being proactive and creating that contact. This is especially valuable around the rim where it'll likely be bigger defenders. And the best bet is to create early contact before you leave the ground, preferably off of two feet. When are you more stable? When you have both feet in the air or both feet on the ground, on the ground, right? Yes, you may be stable. You may be an athlete who's really good at getting up, taking a bump and still finishing. If you're doing that 10 times a game, eight times a game, five times a game even, you're gonna come down wrong, right? It's just gonna be a lot to deal with. If you're able to get into them before you get up into the air, you have a lot more options. So my goal for you guys is to try to get into them before you get up into the air. But again, this game can get very physical and that doesn't always work. So part two is getting very basketball strong. Being stable in midair, learning how to direct your jumps in the right direction to cancel out a bump during the jump. Being strong overhead, all of this. And being able to execute skills throughout. And of course, being basketball strong goes way past just finishing. It applies to everything we've spoken about thus far. So preparing yourself not only in the weight room, but general and specific strength work, but also by practicing these qualities that apply to hoops and just moving other human beings in general is absolutely vital. Shout out to the Ultimate Athleticism Program. So in conclusion, basketball is absolutely a contact sport, whether we like it or not. 
The best players in the world truly embrace this and not only prepare themselves to deal with it, but use it to their advantage. If you can do this too, your game is going to take a massive stride.